Dog, here, look. Come on, Renson. Cooperate, cooperate. We need you. Floor here. All right, if you can hear any panting throughout this broadcast, it's <laughs> definitely not me. It's the young prince of destruction, Renson Stenson. Denton the third, the Archbishop of Chuffington. <laughs> Hello. It's been a while since we've done a show in this type of setup where we're Formation. talking with each other. Let's have it then. What are we talking about? The way I'm phrasing this is diet identity. I believe that diet and identity are associated with each other. I wanted to talk about the pros and the cons of it and what we believe to be or what I believe to be the ultimate truths for me as a person and I think what we are both experiencing. So to clarify by diet identity, you mean something like, I am a carnivore, I am a vegan, I am a keto omnivore, diet, yeah. omnivore, paleo, spaleo. Clean eater, whole food eater. Okay, well talk to me about the pros of diet identity. So I wrote down a few things here, so feel free to interject with what you believe. So I said that one of the benefits was, it's beneficial to experience exclusive Activity? Exclusivity. To see how your body reacts. So if you just eat one way for an extended period of time, your body's going to react a certain way and you're going to see either a lot of benefits or a lot of cons for eating a certain way. It allows you to do a clean split test. Yeah. Meaning that when the variables are controlled for enough data to be collected, you can safely assume and assert how a certain diet rubric has affected you right so people that eat plant-based for a while like we did and even raw we were like this is so great this is i see that eating exclusively this way provides this this and this benefit and we were able to see that by having exclusivity if we had weaned and wavered and ate food that didn't align with plant-based or whole food then we wouldn't have gotten as accurate as a understanding of the benefits it had on our body, which were significant benefits. I do think that diet exclusivity is a wonderful tool for growth and healing and optimization and adjustment because if you don't have the date, you just don't know. And I think that diets get so confused and when you throw in the everything in moderation slash just kind of eat what you want in balance, dude, then you never really know what's good for you and what your body reacts well to. So that's a pro of diet exclusivity. Any other pros? I wrote that, which is along the same lines, the ends of the spectrum provide unique health outcomes. So Mm. I've seen so many YouTube videos where I ate vegan and I got this result and I ate purely carnivore and I got this result. So it seems that when you're exclusive and you're on one side of the spectrum, you can have unique health outcomes as a result. I love it, yeah. Another benefit is that it can be community driven. I think that when if you are struggling with identity, which I for sure have, I know you have when you're figuring it out, diet identity and exclusivity can give you a community to belong to of like minded people. When I first went plant based, I connected with new people who saw the world differently because obviously our diet choices are reflections of our value structures. But I plugged into a new community and I think that people need that. It also gives you something to focus on something to do something to test and i think there are a lot of benefits to it is there any others you want to touch on i wrote down community association and so sense of belonging mm. you yep. get that when you're solely one way because you're like oh that's my person i connect with them and let's share recipes and be together okay so i also said that the challenge of saying no is empowering as mm. an individual agree with that when you say no to the junk food or you say no to meat or you say no to a certain plant-based food you feel empowered you're like i'm making decisions for myself and my health and i think that it brings confidence to the individual i agree and i think that has the knock-on effect of empowering you in other aspects of your life the first time i'm going to keep saying the first time i went plant-based but that was a transformational period of my life where i was set my own boundaries and creating a new identity of what I believed in and back then this is like six years ago or something going vegan was like still a big thing it might still be I don't know but when I did it everybody was like on me about it and talking about it and knew about it because I lived in a tight-knit community and it definitely made me feel good when I was like well I'm not eating that I'm saying no to that I'm not doing that that bled into other aspects of life where I learned to say no set boundaries and I think that's a really good thing about it Mm. gives you a cause to fight for 
I agree. And then the last thing that I said as a pro to having a diet identity, it drives change to make food quality a priority. So if you're eating only plants and whole food, you're tending to want to have it organic as possible. You're seeking, you're like, well, this is the only thing I'm eating. So I want it to be as of high quality as it can be. Or if you're eating animal products and you decide that's the path that you're going to take, well, I'm only going to eat grass fed and free range and antibiotic free, those types types of associations food. with food and I think that when people go to pick their diet identity it drives change to make it of higher quality agree all right well I think that's a pretty good summary of the pros so let's dive in maybe to more of the cons of like diet identity so I'm kind of doing verses here that's kind of what came to me as I was writing this but short-term versus long-term benefits so as both of us have been plant-based twice now each for I was it for a year and then I was off and then I was for a year and then now I'm off again and then I know Joshua didn't follow exact same framework very similar so we would have a lot of short-term benefits where we're like wow we feel really light very fresh we feel like this is helping our digestion this is helping this aspect this aspect but then when a year comes along we start to feel different and this has happened to me both times where I find myself looking for other food and craving other food and that's my intuition I believe telling me this was good for the period that you had it but now it's time to switch into a different way of eating which therefore leads to the con that diet exclusivity can make that adjustment period more difficult yes because it's like if you're wrapped up in your identity and then your body's like oh i need more and that's the same i know a lot of people get that when they go oh that spider went from that chair onto your onto your sleeve oh god oh he's a jumper all right jumper boy Jumping spiders aside, when you're on the downtrend, if you're in that identity, it's like, oh, it's going to be difficult to shift because I'm wrapped yeah. up in this. And that was really hard for me the first time. I was in Thailand when I was getting those feelings and plant-based. And I was like, man, it's, it's tough for me to shift out of this and go back. Mm. This is everything. This is what I'm known for. This yes. is what my brand is. This is what all of that is. You, you get tied into that identity. And this is the same for more than just diet. But we're talking about diet specifically here. So Yeah, because it's like, well, if I'm plant-based and I believe in these social changes as well, then how am I supposed to switch? Or if I believe in animal protein and everyone I know believes in animal protein, how do I switch to plants? Even when you eat really, really clean all the time, short term, that's j it's so empowering, like we said, all the pros, but then do you feel isolated? Do you feel like you can't eat with other people? Do you feel like you can't participate in events and it's kind of, it can be isolating and alone? Especially if your diet is so different and so exclusive that it is, it creates a social barrier. Is mm -hmm. that what you were saying? Yeah. So the next con, con is... It can become a goal versus an intuitive decision. Oh well, yeah, I like that. Like a status symbol. Yeah. So like I've been plant-based for eight years or I've been a carnivore for five years. And you put that on your profiles of social media and into your social circles. And then you're known for that. And then other people see that and they're like, oh, I want to make it five years as this or 10 years as this. And it becomes then a goal instead of an intuitive decision of, is this for me? Is diet exclusivity for me? What diet identity is right for me? You start, you stop questioning that intuitive decision and just follow the goal of I'm going to do it for this long. Yeah, and then it's rather than I'm feeling really good in my body and healthy as the status symbol, which is still a status symbol, and we have lots of them, so how humans are. The status symbol becomes I've done this for this long and therefore this is successful. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. I think that's a problem. Yeah, I think And I think that as the longer it goes, the harder it is to get off the loop. And people who make content and have brands specifically about diet exclusi exclusivity obviously have more cons than just the average, not average person, but the person that doesn't make a brand out of their diet identity. So there's obviously a scale to all of these pros and cons. Right. Cause we're, we just sharing, we're just sharing what happened for us. Oh, no. He's careful. Right. Get back, dog. He's very hot. <laughs> Okay, so the last con I have on here is social benefits versus personal benefits, which I think that we talked about more of like we, f we focus on the social change and the social benefit of like when you're plant based, you're like, well, I'm helping animals and I'm helping the environment and I'm helping this aspect of social change and earthly human change. It's social versus personal benefits. So mm -hmm. like 
okay, well, you are contributing to social change and I was contributing to social change. Maybe. Maybe, potentially. But am I personally still benefiting from it? So the, the animals are benefiting from it, but am I benefiting from it? So that can be kind of a con where you're just so focused on the social change that you're making within your diet identity that you t- you take yourself away from the personal benefit. Yeah, and I think that ties in with another con I have is that when you are in an ident- diet identity, you are very easily led, you're very easily influenced, and you're very easily exploited. You see this all the time where people get into a idea and then all of a sudden they're just spending way too much of their energy into keeping that identity alive, meaning you're easy to market to and you're easy to sell to, which there are obviously sales is not a problem, but when you're in this identity, you sometimes make decisions that you wouldn't typically have made because you're kind of under the influence of the identity. And the last con I wanted to touch on is that it can cause social rifts, especially on the value social structure where it's outside of the personal gain. And you got to remember that I think that identities are weaponized by certain entities in a, in a however you want to perceive that. I think it's happening because you see arguments and social arguments and people falling out, family units getting more divisive and separated because the diet identities and the social constructs behind it don't match up and i think that's been engineered to a certain extent so i just that was what i experienced if you have any other perspectives of pros and cons of diet identity love to hear it we'd love to hear it in the comments we know that we can miss some this is just from our personal experience and reflection so then i want to just end this video talking about what i believe to be ultimate truth when it comes to diet there are no like ultimate truths maybe potentially but this is like where i feel like i'm operating from right now i think kate's just sharing this because it's helped her move on from being constrained and trapped by diet identities so when that happens the people we are yourself included likely want to share that concept with other people with the idea that it could also empower them so please share your ultimate truths about this Catherine. Okay, so I don't know if this is considered a diet identity, but I believe in the intuitive eating more now where we do eat plant-based still. We still eat plant-based lunches. We still eat plant-based desserts or dinners. All the time, yeah. So it's something that we feel intuitively called to eat plant-based sometimes, and then we feel intuitively called to eating animal products. So we follow our intuition of what our body needs, and we, we, we tune into that. So that's a truth that we're operating from right now is that diet is intuitive, and it doesn't have have to be identity driven but body driven and i think that generally your body is a lot smarter than the marketing machine of diet identities <laughs> hmm. definitely men go through fluctuations sure especially if you're training and you're working out and you can feel that you need different things but women with their hormone cycles every month your body needs very different resources through different times of the month and the more i watch you become more intuitive with that where kate will be like oh i'm not gonna i'm just gonna eat fruit exclusively for two days and then other times it's like i don't want to eat anything fresh for three days or whatever you tune into i I feel like it's definitely improving your health overall so i just wanted to add that because it's nice to see and i think it's a good way to trust your intuition over the quasi engineered diet identities of the 21st century so is there anything else that you want to touch on as a truth for you in terms of food yeah i got a few hills that i'll die on with diet whole foods are meant to be eaten regardless of your religious spiritual beliefs they literally grow perfect and they don't need to be added to or changed they're going to be better for you ingredients that you can't pronounce always going to be a problem there's never a unless you've got like you can't say watermelon or something but typically the really long ones that you can't pronounce or understand are going to be a problem for you the more local the food is the better it's going to be for you because of the biome but the energetics of how it was raised and the people behind it and the intention and love that goes into the food is real as long as you're eating whole food clean and you listen to your body i think your body knows and i think that as you traverse and navigate through life if you just listen to what it's telling you i think you'll have a better time than listening to a marketing machine that's telling you to be a certain way put you in a certain box of diet and what it's supposed to be and this happened da, da, da. i think your the intuition along with the principles of whole food will outperform the this is the diet identity you must do this 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 and this I, I, and i'd encourage you to test that because i i know that the josh diet is good for the josh man hmm. Uh, that was the most important thing that I needed to touch on was eat as clean as possible with whatever decision that you make. <laughs> Got him. 
So that was something that I believe in. If you're going to eat plants, eat the best plants that you can yeah. eat. If you're going to eat animal products, be, eat the best animal products that you can eat. Yeah. Eat as clean as you possibly can in all given instances. Because then you will feel better living. Yeah. Definitely. This is an open conversation. We're coming at this from two souls navigating this experience just like you, figuring out as we go with the intention of to feel better living. So we'd be very open to hearing your experience with diet identities. Have you had good experiences, bad experiences? Has anything that we've said resonated? It's an open conversation. If you are experiencing negative health effects, mm-hmm. investigate your diet to see if it's serving you. And this, okay. this is especially true if you are strictly in a diet identity, like I'll use me as an example. Nine months ago, I have low energy. My libido is dropping. I don't feel good. I don't feel powerful. Okay, well, let's have a look at your diet. What's your diet identity? Oh, I eat a plant-based diet. Oh, is that serving you? It wasn't serving me. I needed different protein. As soon as I put the new protein back in, I was like a different man. I put 14 pounds back on, but more than that, my inner energy went up. You see, so investigating it that way. Are there signs or intuitive feelings supporting your choice for change? Good question. Tune in. Tune in. This is just an, a video to either work with your diet identity, you change your diet identity, whatever it is. We're here to support you. We're here to be objective and just help you feel better living. Help you feel better living. All right. Thank you very much for watching. I've been Joshua. This has been Catherine. This has been Feel Better Living. And I appreciate your time watching. I'm grateful for you sharing a conversation with me. I'm grateful too. Much love, everybody. Peace. Can you kiss me? On camera. <gasps> End the video. Mm-hmm. <laughs>